let's dive into the wonderful world of particle and emitter attributes. So I've got a magic wand, and it's the parent of this brand spanking new particle emitter. So what I want to do here is make these particles move faster, change their number and size, and eventually we'll get into randomizing their color. First things first, I want to just show you the basics. You're going to select those particles and hit Control A on your keyboard so that you can get the attribute editor open. And you will see, in addition to the standard transform node for the particles, there is a shape node. And this is where most of the particles attributes are found. And also the emitter node. The emitter is pushing particles into the shape node. And the emitter is where we'll be able to control the initial speed and number of particles. So first of all, there is the rate. So this is the number of particles per second. If we want more particles, we can increase the rate. Pretty straightforward. I'll rewind and play back. I'd like to mention at this point that if you try to scrub in the timeline, you're going to get strange results. And that's because the particle systems are calculated by a history-dependent solver. And what that means is that what happens here on frame 91 depends upon what happened on frame 90. And if we skip around here, it's not going to calculate correctly. So we can only rewind and play back. So more particles. Let's make it more obvious. Maybe like a thousand particles per second. Rewind and play back. So it's making a much more dense ball. I'll bring it back down to something like 50. Scrolling down a little bit in the emitter attributes. Down in basic emission speed attributes, you'll see speed. Let's set that to maybe 10 instead of 1. And rewind and play back. So that's a little bit more like it. We've got particles shooting out. I'll back out in my viewport a little bit. Hit the 5 key so I can see shading. Don't be alarmed by this box here. That's just the way that Maya indicates that we've selected the particle system in a shaded view. We could finesse this a little bit. You'll notice that the particles are all coming from a single point. We want that to be a little bit more interesting. What we can do is we can play with the distance and direction attributes. So if I say I want the minimum distance to be 5 units, then particles can only be born 5 units away from the emitter. I'll set the max distance to 5 as well. So you'll see they're being born farther away from that center. If I want them to be born from a sort of sphere around there, I might set the minimum distance to 0 and the maximum distance to 5. Cool, now we've got enough particles moving around that we can think about starting to animate our magic wand. Tap the space bar and I want to do my animation in the front view. And I want to be referring to the camera view while I do it. Before we start trying to animate the magic wand, we need to actually disable the particle systems because they won't run terribly well as we're trying to scrub around in the timeline. So I'll just go into the Modify menu and go to Evaluate Nodes and temporarily disable particles so that as I'm scrubbing through the timeline, I won't have particles flying around and, and causing performance issues. Cool, so I'll start by going to frame one, picking up the wand with the move tool, move it off camera as seen in the camera viewport, maybe rotate a little bit randomly, interestingly. And I can just press the S key on the keyboard to set keys for the selected wand object. And you'll see in the channel box that those channels have lit up in sort of orange or red color to indicate that there are now keyframes there. There's an incoming animation curve on each one of those channels. I'll scrub forward in my timeline a few frames, maybe 24 frames, that's one second. Grab the Move tool in the front view, move and rotate, press S. Go forward a few more frames, maybe frame 48. 
select and move it off camera. Maybe rotate it a little bit too. And press S once again. I'll set the overall duration of my timeline accordingly, maybe 72 frames. Rewind, look in my camera viewport. Choose the select tool there so I'm not distracted by any manipulators. And press play. So I think the wand needs to move a little bit farther at the end off camera. So I'll go back to that frame in my timeline, frame 48. And in my front view, I'll move over a little bit with Alt and Middle Mouse, grab the Move tool, move it a little bit farther off screen, and press S. And that will overwrite that keyframe. Go back to Beginning, Rewind, So it won't win any animation awards. I can maybe clean it up a little bit by moving this keyframe. I'll hold down the shift key and click to select that keyframe. And then maybe move it a little bit later in time. Rewind, playback. Let's try moving it earlier in time. There, I've got a more consistent motion across the screen now. So I think I'm in a good place now to save my scene once again. File Save Scene As, ParticlesWando2.ma. So let's take a look at that with Modify Evaluate Nodes Particles turned back on. I'll tap the space bar with the mouse hovering over my camera view to maximize that. Rewind and playback. And we can't see the particles terribly well right now, but if I just select them and then switch to the 4 key on the keyboard, I can look at them in wireframe. Now I can see them quite clearly. So we do have particles moving. Next we're going to play around with their rate and speed a little bit more and get better motion.